Welcome back guys to my channel. A user asked me to solve an issue. How do you distribute instances on a curve with the same distance between them, using and managing different radius for each control point? It's a little challenge, but in this video you will find a solution. So let's get started. I'm working with Blender version 4.1.0 and to make the same example of this user, I'm going to add a simple curve with a shift A curve bezier. I will focus on this curve, press 7 to see it from the top view, press enter to go in the edit mode, press A to select all the control points, S, Y to scale all to 0 on the Y axis, right button subdivide, I will subdivide 3 times to have 5 control points, I go to the item and to simulate this example, I will change the radius of some of these control points, but you can manipulate and manage the radius in your geometry nodes, for example, with a ramp or whatever. In this case, I will set three for this radius and three for this radius, for example, and I will leave one on the others. Now press tab to exit from the edit menu, go to plus general geometry nodes, press seven in the viewport and press new to create a new geometry nodes. Now to simulate the issue, I will add with the F3 instance on point. Here I will add a sphere like this, Alt right button between these two nodes, radius of one, and I will use with F3 the radius field to make the scale of each sphere. And as you can see, we have the problem. So we need to redistribute this sphere, maintaining the same distance between them and changing this distance related to the radius of all these spheres. So how can we solve this problem? If I press Shift Z to go to the wireframe, the technique is very simple. What we need is to sum the correct parts of the radius, so the correct use of the space of the length of this curve by these spheres. So in this case, I will sum the radius of this sphere, the entire diameter of this sphere, the sum of the diameter of this sphere, the diameter of this sphere, and only the radius of this sphere, because only this radius part is on the length on the curve. And if you take the entire length of the curve and subtract this entire sum of this length, we get this result. Now, this is the empty space that we can use to distribute the other spheres. And what we need to do is divide this empty space by the number of the control points subtract one. And as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five control points. So the space between them is four. So the control points minus one to get one piece of distance. And this is the distance we need to use to distribute between these spheres. Okay, so let's calculate this distance. And to make this is not so hard to do because all we need is with F3 an attribute statistic node to sum all the radius related by the index. So if the index of our control points are equal to what? To zero, okay, like this, or the same index here equal to what? To the total count of points minus one, like this. And why minus one? Because we need one time the radius of the last control points and the first control points. So this is the first and this is the last control points. Okay, so if the index is equal to zero or the maximum index of the control points, we can link this in a switch to get the float value of what? In the true condition, we need only the radius itself like this. So we are starting to, to get the, the radius of this sphere and this sphere. Otherwise, we want to multiply the radius by two to get the diameter of the sphere between the first and the last control points. We can link this to the float socket of these attribute statistics. And now we have the sum of all these values. So this part here from here to here. Press H to collapse some nodes, select all these nodes, Control J F2, sum of the used length on the curve. It's obvious the curve needs to, to have an harmonic and sweet shape. Otherwise, if you have 
a curve like this, it's, it, it's more difficult to distribute in a correct way to avoid a collision between the spheres inside of these uh, subviews. So make sure to have a correct uh, curve in your project. Now we can take the curve length, and I remember you, this length is different than the spline parameter that gives you the length of the position of each control point for each control point. So if I create a route with the shift and right button here and link this to the curve, shift control and click to see the preview and link this to the length, I can see here the five control points. And if I click in the spreadsheet, you can see the correct the same length of the curve for all these control points, and this is very important for the next step. But if I take this length, you can see the increase in the incremental length on the curve for each control point that represents the length on the curve for each control point on the curve. So we don't need to use this spline parameter or the spline length. Okay, no, don't use uh, this uh, spline length because this length works uh, in the spline domain, not in the control points domain. So if you use this length, you can access to the length on the spline domain, as you can see. So you could use uh, this uh, spline length, but you need to add a domain type uh, choosing the point uh, to force uh, the context of this spline length and if I take this value here in the viewer you can see I can have the same value for the control points like the curve length node here. So what is the difference between these two spline length and the curve length? If you use these in the correct domain you get the total length where the control point is located. If you use these curve length you get for all the control points the length of the total number of the curves added together. So this is the difference. Okay. In this case, since I'm using only one curve, I will use the curve length to simplify the workflow. So now that I have the total length, I subtract what the result of my max. So keep in mind, I'm using the radius, but if you can see, if I select the sum of this value, you see here 16. So the measure from here to here, more or less. But if I link the length, you can see we have a 0 0.020. So I'm using a unit measure or a context in my project in which I, I need to multiply the sum by 0 0.001 or divide by 1000 because I'm using millimeters. And if you want to stay with the same relationship between these numbers, I need to divide these 16 by 1000 to get what? To get 0 0.016 on 0 0.02. Okay, so as you can see, the length is 0 0.02 and the total used length is 0 0.016. Now I can subtract these two values to get the red part and I can divide this value by what? By the geometry group input, linking this to a domain size, getting what? The same value as before, so the point count subtracting 1 why? Because, as mentioned before, if I have five spheres, five control points, the number of the space between these five control points is four. So the number of control points subtract one, as you can see with the four arrows. Now that we have this instance, we can drop this viewer. And now the tricky part, what we need is to redistribute these spheres, so the, these control points along the curve, in a new position based by this simple curve node that allows you to get for each control point of a curve a different position on the same curve if you want to change the position of the control points you need. So we need a simple curve and a set position to redistribute the position of each control point. Remember, if you don't link anything in this position, Blender we use the same position node to don't change the current position of the control points. As you can see, if I link or unlink this field, I will create a new route here to link the curve here. So before linking the position between these two nodes, I need to calculate the new position for each control point. How? The idea is to 
use an accumulate field using it in in this way so for each control point i want to increment and sum what for the first index i don't want any length for the second index i want to use the radius of the previous index plus what the distance we get from the division between the rest of the empty part of the curve not used and the number of the control points subtract one so this is this space this piece plus only one the radius of the actual and current control point so we have three parts to sum together and for the next point we need to use uh, all the value of the length calculated up to here because this is the second index uh, again we need to add what three parts the radius of the previous index uh, the equal distance get from this division plus uh, one time the radius of the current control points and so on so from this accumulate field we need to get for each control point a new leading result based by the sum of these three parts for each control point and then we will use this leading result in the length of this simple curve to get the position to link on this set position node so to calculate these three parts for each index we don't need to calculate these three parts for the index one because i need to maintain the position of the first sphere as is and to do this we need to move this a little bit and ask me if the index of the, the current control point is equal to zero and i will link this in a switch taking the float number i need to have zero for this value of the accumulation otherwise so in the false conditions so for all the others control points what i need is the three parts mentioned before from a simple index node i can link the geometry because i need to get the float value of the radius and this is the value of what of the index subtracting one because i need the value of the previous control points related to the current so in this way i can get the radius of the previous index for the index one is this part and for the index two is this part this part or this part but it's always the same value from this i need to add what the radius of the current control point and i can duplicate with a shift d the radius and link this x to collapse this and add another attribute because we need to add what this chunk this dividing result that is the third part okay so now we have the first this the second this radius and the third part the equal distance i want to have between these two indexes i can link this to the false and for the second we will get from this leading so this accumulation field so these incrementals adding values from the previous value the correct incremental position for each control point and now i can link the position to this position as you can see we have a problem here why because as mentioned in this part on the sum of the length used we use the here a radius so a value that is more automatically 1000 times bigger than the length used in my project so in the same way here where we added the radius of the previous index and the radius of the current index we need here before adding this distance that is very small 0 0.001 as you can see if i press shift control click and click on this divide okay that is 0 0.02 minus 0 0.016 divided by 4 is 0 0.001 if i press control shift and click on this add as you can see we have the numbers of the adding of the radius that is very high and we need to multiply also in this case by 0 0.0001 to have the same relationship in the scale for this context now i can take all these nodes move these a little bit move this multiply here and link these to the add drop the viewer and voila as you can see if i go in the viewport overlays and uncheck the annotations you can see the same distance 
between all these spheres based by the different radius of all these control points. And now I can select all these nodes, Ctrl J F2, redistribute control points based by different radius. We can select all these nodes, Ctrl J F2, instances, and now, if I go to the edit mode and take these control points, press N to see in the item the radius, if I decrease the radius, as you can see, we always have the same distance between the spheres. Mm -hmm. Press Shift to see the spheres from the top view, and as you can see, all works. All works uh, even if I take these uh, control points, uh, these three intermediate control points, and press G and Y, and if I move uh, away from the origin point along the y-axis, as you can see, I maintain the same distance between the spheres. Another example is this. If I take these geometry nodes, add a, a root and select these and set with F3 a custom set radius on the curve like this using the factor or the spline parameter node like this. If I use this factor in the radius and I multiply these before going in the set radius and if I increase this radius, as you can see, I always have the same distance between this sphere. And you can manipulate the radius as you want without worrying about the space between these instances. So now to make the group node of this workflow, I will take all these parts and sorry, this is the set position in this section and not in the instances. I can link this geometry here to drop these and to have only one root for the group node. This is very important. Otherwise, the group node we are going to create will create two geometry inputs. Now we can select all these nodes, Ctrl G to create a unique group, press Tab to exit and rename in Distribute Control Points. And we have our group node. We can select with the right button to make as an asset. And if you save the file inside your path of the asset and preferences of Blender, you can access to this group node in all your workflow. Otherwise, you can add from your new file or your project with the menu file and append the group node passing through my file or a new file made from your own. Little tip, if you have a problem with the scaling, as mentioned before, for the 1000 relationship, you can access inside a group node, going in the redistribute control points based by different radius and remove or modify this multiply and this multiply node to adjust in a correct way the relationship between the radius of your control points and the unit measure scaled used by Blender. And this was the tutorial. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you learned something. You can download this project from my Gumroad as always. If you like my work, please subscribe to my channel, check a like, add a comment if you like it. Don't forget to check the bell icon to get all the notifications of my new videos and see you to the next tutorial. Bye.